Today we're gonna to have an existential freak out. Do you ever have a hard time getting through your day knowing that no matter what you do with your existence, it's just gonna fall somewhere between a very, very short blink and a very, very, very short blink in the universe's eye? Well, I try to find comfort in the fact that there are 7.2 billion other thinking, living human brains on Earth with which I share that feel. But then I imagine trying to count them all and I realized that would take me three full lifetimes. And by the time I was done, there would be billions more yet to count and I become Sisyphus rolling my boulder up the hill. And then I force myself to take a deep breath because I'm kind of starting to freak out now. And then I picture the 10 to the 22nd air molecules currently filling my lungs, which of course I cannot do. Since we're thinking about air, I begin to feel the one ton of atmosphere above me pressing down upon my head. Or is that just the burden of consciousness? We must be calm. We must stare time and size directly in the face so we can transform that fear of the unknown into this. And we do this by embracing the scale of the universe. Here are some of my favorite ways to do that. Links down below. At the magnitude of meat space, this daily meters and miles, we sit nearly equidistant between the largest and smallest things that we know of. Roughly equal orders of magnitude between the unfathomable diameter of the observable universe and the point at which points themselves begin to break down into energy and waves and even strings. Technology and art gives us the power to journey out in either direction like we are Alice and this is Wonderland. We can get very large or very small with just a sip of knowledge or a nibble of imagination. What about time? What about today? Yes, I may be a mayfly in the eyes of the universe, but I am a mayfly with a mind and opposable thumbs and the internet and an unquenchable desire to put the universe in order. By studying deep space and deep rocks, we bear witness to the whole of time up to this point. What did the clock read when life began, when our planet was born? Is this clock ticking up? or down. We have hacked into channels of the universe beyond our own limited slice of spectrum. We've peered into alternate electromagnetic dimensions using synthetic eyes from radio telescopes to x-ray crystallography. What is a microscope but a telescope turned on its head? Is this helping? Do you feel a little bit better? I think by defining our place along this continuum of scale that we become comfortable with our significance and yes, sometimes our lack of significance. Each of us is a universe of atoms, but we must accept that sometimes we are insignificant and there are things that we do not have the power to change, whether that is in the deepest reaches of space or in the next room. I think there is freedom in that knowledge. I think it lifts away a small bit of the burden that being a thinking, feeling, wondering human being can place upon our shoulders. Do you choose to drown in that insignificance or do you drown in awe? A daily spoonful of perspective as medicine against fear of the unknown. Jason Silva calls this awe as therapy. This feeling can be impossible to describe, but the Japanese have a word for it. You again, an awareness of the universe that triggers emotional responses too deep and powerful for words. This feeling isn't a portal to another world so much as it is a deeper connection with the world that we live in. Maybe like me, you experience all of these things and you marvel at the scale of time and space and you become profoundly aware of everything, yet you still cannot describe your feelings with anything except a slack jaw and a mixture of sounds that sound something like That means you're doing it right. Big or small, the universe is a pretty awesome place. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what your favorite way to experience the scale of the universe is down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe so you can get more great science every week here from It's Okay to Be Smart. Thanks for watching. Stay curious.